Today I'm going to show you how to grow stuff in Unity, more precisely with Shader Graph. Stuff like vines or even some trees, why not? And that's just a few of the examples I come up with. It's a simple trick but quite useful. But without the proper UVs, these won't work well. So let's see what I'm talking about, let's jump right into it and I'm going to share with you how you can grow stuff in Unity. But first I just want to mention that these videos are possible thanks to the support of my patrons. All the projects done on my channel are available there, links in the description. So this kind of effect is composed of three essential parts. A mesh with the proper UVs, a specific shader and then a script where we put everything together. So let's start with the shader. As you can see I'm using Unity 2020.3.2 and I'm going to do it in the Universal Render Pipeline. I also installed Shader Graph via the Package Manager in the Unity Registry. Once you got all of that done, we can start by creating a blank Shader Graph. I'm going to name it to Grow Vines Shader Tutorial. Just going to make some room here. Ok, so the target of this shader is universal. Elite Material, Metallic for the Workflow, Opaque Surface, what we need is to turn on Alpha Clip and to side it. And to side it so we can see the inside of our mesh and Alpha Clip we are going to need so we can clip the excess. For now I'm going to create a color property and connect it to the base color. I'm going to select a white and increase the alpha to 100. This is just so I can have control over the color of the mesh. I'm also going to create two floats, one for the smoothness and the other one for the metallic and connect them respectively to their inputs of the fragment function. What really matters here is in the vertex part of the shader. There is a node that gives us access to the mesh vertex and it is called the position node. Just make sure the space is object. And for example if you add a vector tree to this and connect it to the position of the vertex. And this is just an example. I'm going to save the shader. And if I create a cylinder and a material out of the shader, just like this, and assign this material to the cylinder. And yeah, I'm going to select a green color. Okay. And as you can see, if I play with this vector tree, more precisely the Y value, I'm basically offsetting the mesh vertex position. And if we replace this with the normal vector of the object, basically each vertex has a normal vector that is perpendicular and pointing outwards. If we multiply the normal vector with a vector tree and add it to the position, in this case I'm going to use a sphere. If I start playing with the vector tree, we are basically scaling up and down this sphere, depending on the x, y and z, as you can see. And this is just to show that with this technique, let me just remove this vector tree. If we use a UV node and if we split it, we get access to a gradient that goes from black to white. And if you connect to a subtract node, if we play with this value, we could scale any mesh based on the normal vector with this gradient. For example, we can create a float called grow. This float property will go from 0 to 1. It's basically a slider, where 1 is fully grown and 0, well, we don't see the mesh. If we saturate this value, it's basically clamping between 0 and 1. You could also use a clamp node, basically the same thing. Now if we multiply all of this with another float, in this case the scale, basically how much we want to scale the mesh. And if we multiply this with a normal vector and save it. If we increase the grow, nothing happens because the scale is set to 0. But if we increase a little bit the scale, and then play with the grow, you will notice something weird happening. What's happening is that the gradient is influencing the normals and is stretching via the normals the mesh. And the sphere is not a great mesh to explain how this works. 
but we will create a proper mesh in a few minutes. For now, since we are scaling up the mesh, what we are missing is a way to clamp the vertex that have too much scale, and you will better understand this with vines in a moment. So we need to invert the gradient with a 1 minus, and we can connect this to the alpha input, and then we simply need another float, we can call it clip or alpha clip, which is also a slider between 0 and 1, and we can connect it to the alpha clip threshold. Now don't forget to save again, and if we increase the clip to 0 0.9, more or less, and then play with the grow, now the vertices that add too much scale are being clipped and not rendered. Like I said, the sphere is not a great example, so let's move on to the next part where we create a vine in Blender. It's going to be quick and I'm going to explain you step by step on how you can do it in Blender. So, once you open up Blender, you can select everything with A and delete it, and then with Shift A, we want to create a Bezier curve. Now, if you press 7 on the numpad, you go to the top view, and in here, we want to push this only in the X by pressing G and then X, only one value. So the Bezier curve starts from 0. And now, if you press Tab to enter in edit mode, you can select vertices, rotate them, stretch the Bezier curve. And if you want to add another point, you can press E to extrude. And so on, you can rotate this. And you can make the vine however you want with this simple Bezier curve. Once you think it's looking ok, the way we make it thicker is by going to this panel right here in the Bezier curve, in the Bezier curve properties and in geometry we want to increase the depth value of the bevel, a round bevel, and around 0 0.2 should be enough. The resolution of the bevel will control how many verts there will be in the radius. And up here we got the resolution preview, which is set to 12, and it will control how detailed this Bezier curve is. Okay, so once you think it's looking nice, we need to transform this to a mesh. And it's very simple, all you need is to go to object mode with tab, and with this selected you can press Alt-C, and you want to convert to mesh. Now if you press tab again, you will notice that you no longer have the Bezier curve, and now you get a mesh. And now comes a very important part where we need to make sure that the UVs are properly done. So let's drag a new window on this bottom left corner, simply click and drag. And up here we want to go to the UV editor, also turn on UV sync selection by the way. And while holding shift and alt I'm going to select this edge loop, and as you can see in the UV editor it's basically the left edge. And we don't want that, we want this to, to be rotated. 90 degrees, so this edge loop matches the bottom of the UV editor. And this is extremely important for this shader to work out, for this effect to be noticeable, so make sure that the beginning of this vine matches the bottom of the UV editor, just like this as you can see. If I select this edge loop in the UV editor, they go from the bottom to the top. That's exactly what we want. Now one last thing we can do is while holding Shift and Alt, we can select the last edge loop and then press O to turn on proportional editing. And as you can see, you can scroll this up and down to influence more or less vertex. And we want to shrink the end of this vine and scale up the beginning of the vine like this. Remember to select the edge loops, I'm using Shift and Alt and then I click to select the wall ring and then I press S to scale up and since I have proportional editing on, it's basically the O for shortcut, it influences all of the vertex around. So once you get this simple vine, you can rename it if you want, the object. What really matters now is that you save this blend file, you can save it directly to your Unity project. Unity will import this automatically, and now all you gotta do is drag and drop this to your scene, just like this. And now I'm also going to drag and drop the material we created out of the shader to this vine. As you can see, it's green. And now you will notice that if we set the grow all the way to zero, well, it will clip the vine because we need to adjust the scale and clip variables. If the clip is too high, which it is now, then the scale will have to be super low until we close that gap. But if we decrease the clip, 
we see the geometry that is in excess. But that's because the scale is too high. So with a clip of around 0 0.97, 96 or a bit less, we can then decrease the scale and now the vine will look pointy instead of clipped. Cool. I'm gonna leave the scale at minus 1.9 and the clip at around 0 0.92, even though these values may not work on your side. Ok, so now let's see how we can animate this via script. I'm gonna create a new C-sharp script and call it Grow Vines Tutorial. Double click to open it up and, well, we need a few variables. First, we need a public list of mesh renderers. We can call it Grow Vines Meshes because we may want to use several objects at the same time. Then we need a public float for the time it takes to grow, I'm gonna say it's 5, and a public float for the refresh rate, I'm gonna say it's 0 0.05. We also need a float for the minimum grow and the maximum grow, minimum of 0 0.2 and maximum of 0 0.97 for now. We can turn them into a slider if we open brackets and say range between 0 and 1. Okay. And we need the meshes because we want to save the material. So we need a private list of materials. Grow vine materials equals new list material, exactly. And we need a private boolean to know if it is fully grown or not. Okay, so now in the start function, we are going to fill the materials list by iterating through all the meshes and all the materials of that mesh. Because one mesh can have several materials. And if any of those materials has a property called grow, then we can add it to the materials list, the grow vines materials list. We can also set that grow float to be equal to the minimum grow variable. Now we just need to make sure that in the shader, the reference of the grow float is named exactly like this. They must be the same in the shader and in the script, otherwise it won't work. The name of the reference must be the same. Now in the update function, I'm gonna use the spacebar to activate the grow vines effect. And for each material in the grow vines material list, I'm gonna call a coroutine to increase or decrease the grow variable. Sorry, it's not git button down, but instead git key down. So that coroutine is an I enumerator called grow vines that takes a material as a property. And here's where the magic happens. First, we are going to save the grow value of the material to a local variable called grow value. Then if it is not fully grown, we will make it grow, else we will shrink it. We can say something like while grow value is less than the maximum grow, then we want to increment the grow value. How much we want to increment? Well, we can say plus equal to 1 divided by time to grow divided by the refresh rate. Basically, 5 seconds to grow, right, divided by a refresh rate of 0 0.05 gives 100. If we divide 1 by 100, we get a small increment of 0 0.01. Then we can set the grow property of the material to that grow value and wait the refresh rate time. This is for when we want it to grow. If we want to shrink it, we can copy and paste this while. But here we say if the grow value is bigger than the minimum grow, then we remove that small increment value to the grow value variable. Lastly, down here, we check if the grow value is bigger or equal to the maximum grow. If it is, then it's fully grown, else it's not and we can shrink it. Okay, so let's save this and let's test it out. In the vines object, I have the script. I'm gonna drag and drop the vines itself because it has a mesh render with a grow vines material. And I'm gonna leave the rest as it is for now. 
and I'm gonna press play and now every time I press the space bar the vines grow and if I press again it will shrink down awesome it's looking great the only problem is that when the grow is at zero we still see the mesh that's easily fixable by remapping the grow value so in the remap I'm gonna set the minimum in to 0 0.2 instead okay that's much better it seems like at around 0 0.12 we start seeing the mesh so I'm gonna copy and paste this to the minimum grow of the script and that's it it works fine now it's a really cool effect and it seems simple but it's a bit tricky we can also decrease the refresh rate to be even smoother to 0 0.03 and the time to grow to 3 seconds for example or to 1 second or to 10 yeah the only thing that made different is that I created several vines in Blender they all have the same UVs and then I get this effect For the tree it's a little bit tricky because I had to adjust the UV maps very carefully. Carefully so everything is shown in a proper way. You can imagine it as if it was a scanner that goes from the bottom to the top. You don't want the top of the tree to appear first, right? So yeah, that's basically it. I hope this was helpful. It's a cool technique, isn't it? If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, you know. And this is all available on my Patreon page and many many more projects that you can use in your games, in your projects. A big thank you goes to each patron, your support really means a lot. And as usual a quick shout out to the top tier patrons which are Alak Frost, Ari Koftikian, Bradford Errant, Curtis Odorizzi, David Crew, Gillian Voy, Goblin Plague, Hostile Mars Game, Johnny Laet, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Lianos, Lord Byron, Mikael Naz, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Sverving Tree, Unknown Enigma, and Verizuta. So thank you all for watching this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I really hope to see you in the next video.